Hello everybody, welcome back to Software 101 on uh, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, this is going to take up the other half of that, uh, essentially converting to or from uh, Inventor into either 3DS, Max Design, or Maya. Uh, this video is actually dedicated to Maya. Uh, and what we're going to do, it's, it's a little bit more work than you would typically uh, be doing as far as 3DS Max Design goes. Maya takes a little bit more work to get it uh, model ready, a uh, little housekeeping procedures if you will. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll import the uh, same frame assembly uh, that I did excuse me, in the previous uh, 3ds Max video. Uh, here in your options on the right hand side of this window you have the ability to uh, remove duplicate shading networks. Uh, you have the ability to group everything, which I almost never do this group. Uh, I tend to do my grouping in the housekeeping procedures uh, that I was just talking about, uh, where I group things specifically in a certain way. Uh, so I almost never uh, check this box for grouping. Uh, you have the ability to ignore uh, the version. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It kind of depends on what you're trying to import. Uh, I've never really had an issue with ig ignoring the version when it came to the whole inventor to Maya um, workflow, mainly because I have both you know, the same year release for Maya and inventor, as well as 3D Studio Max. Um, I always keep the use namespaces checked and use select a namespace as parent and add new namespace uh, underneath that. You can merge it and you could do the add new namespace string but uh, it, that's that's getting into a can of worms if you will. There's ways that you can, well there's reasons to do it and there's reasons not to do it and so on and so forth. That's a completely different video if you will. Uh, but essentially what we'll do is we'll wait for Maya to import the inventor file or the inventor assembly file into Maya uh, which again like I said with the 3D Studio Max design video it all depends on uh, how efficient and beefy your computer is and also uh, how detailed the model is now right off the bat you would say well maybe there's something wrong because we have these lines that are you know, out in space here. What's that all about? Uh, that is part of the uh, APF import process for some reason. I don't have an actual na uh, answer for you. Uh, but I will say one thing. If you do a smooth shade on everything uh, in your uh, workspace, that goes away. Uh, and it will also go away here in the very near future uh, when we start uh, doing a little of the conversion process. And what I mean by that is whenever it brings an inventor file into Maya, it converts everything to NURBS instead of uh, active polygons. As you can see, we have uh, a lot of nothing up in the window here. Even if I select the entire subassembly, we have no verts, no edges, no faces, no nothing because it's all NURBS. Uh, so what I'll do from the get-go is I'll select everything here and... Let's see, assign it a default color. Uh, I'll assign it. Oh, wait. Do new blend. Uh, I apologize to some of you. I am running dual monitors, so you can't really see what I'm doing in, uh, on the second screen. All, all I did uh, was I assigned a uh, new material on the hyper shader. Right-click, drag up to assign material to selection. But that's a completely different video. Uh, but you'll see here we have a lot of information. And these are all NURBs. If you actually break this down a little bit more, you'll see it's a NURB, not a polygon. So what we'll do, and this is one of those uh, you know housekeeping procedures I was talking about. You'll go up here to Modify, Convert, NURBs to Polygons. And then, after I do that, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and combine uh, all those different polygons because it divides that up into uh, uh, a lot of different, I think it's like, well, yeah, 219 
uh, nerve to poly tessellations. So that's a lot of information to have in your process tree. It's really not needed. I just go through, combine everything into one unit, and then as always, you're going to have to go up here to uh, delete all by type, delete your history out. That'll get rid of all that uh, unnecessary stuff uh, that was originally there. Uh, now you have a standard poly surface, uh, which you can go through and uh, tweak some of that. Uh, we'll go up to convert nerves to polys. If you click that little box, uh, you can change your values in here to get a little bit more resolution in. Excuse me, more resolution uh, involved with that poly whenever it's done render or not rendering out when it's done tessellating uh, all the information, uh, which you could change all this. That is a, well, I guess I could do this video now. Uh, usually what I do is I leave all the, a lot of this at default unless I'm going to, you know, go for a specific uh, value, if you will. Uh, so whether it be triangle or quads. Uh, I usually do not mess with any of these, uh, the chord height ratio, the fractional tolerance, minimum edge length, and all that good stuff, and also 3D delta. I do not mess with that. Usually I just jump it back and forth between triangles and quads. But as you see, we have this little line coming off here with that NURB. Obviously with the poly surface, we do not. Um, now... With that being said, you're looking at, uh, well, a little over 31,000 tries, 31,000 faces, and it is very, very congested in here. Uh, another one of those uh, housekeeping procedures that you would have to do or you would need to go into and do is, uh, let's see, do I have, oh crap, what is that? Um, Bear with me for just a quick second. Uh, typically, if uh, sh I think it's clear edges, yes, it is. Uh, this is a nifty little program that I found online uh, to try and clear up some of these stray edges. It will take a little while for a lot of the congested parts. Uh, for so, for sake argument here, we got you know over fifty thousand edges this is going to take a little while to uh, compile and clean up uh, so I'm going to actually pause this uh, recording for right now and uh, explain a little bit more on clear edges uh, when it's okay now uh, I did pause that video I'll pause the recording uh, because the only downside about clear edges tool is it well the clear edges script is it does take a while to uh, remove a lot of that information. Uh, you can actually see here we started off with around 51,000 edges and I can't remember the faces and tries that were involved uh, but we essentially went from 51,000 down to about 10,000. Uh, the downside was it took about mm, 10 minutes to do so uh, which isn't uh, a huge amount of time uh, but when it comes to actually you know sitting here waiting twiddling your thumbs uh, you know, waiting for this to do it. Uh, it can be kind of time consuming, but the good thing about the Clear Edges script is you can essentially run it and walk away, come back later, and it'll be done. Um, but essentially, uh, all you have to do to remember uh, if you're importing into Maya is essentially import your uh, uh, part or your assembly, you know, your inventor part or assembly uh, into Maya. Uh, once it comes in, make sure that you come up and uh, do a modify, convert NURBS to polygons. Uh, you can leave it at the default settings. It does really good, uh, especially if you don't need anything that's uh, seriously over the top as far as resolution is concerned. Um, once you get done with that and you convert all of your NURBS to polygons, uh, don't forget to go through and group uh, all the different uh, NURB conversion uh, uh, I 
can't even remember what this is called. Uh, basically, all your different um, features in the tree. So I'll just go up here, convert nerves to polys. All these different files down here. Uh, don't forget to essentially just combine those. Uh, once it goes through and combines, then all you have to do, as soon as it's done the combining, Make sure you come up here and delete all by type for your history. That'll get rid of all that uh, unnecessary stuff. Uh, like I said, you could do a clear edges. It'll run clear edges script. Uh, it'll clean up all your information. Then all you have to do from there is go ahead and either, well, in an ideal world, all you have to do is uh, regroup uh, your parts into certain groups that you want them in. Uh, with basic hierarchy um, once your groups are set up all you have to do is apply your shaders um, animate and render that's pretty much it uh, don't forget to save your file obviously um, with the process is simple it's just a couple different uh, steps uh, that are necessary when compared to like your 3ds uh, max design Maya doesn't do a bad job at all but there's a couple more steps you have to work through but for now uh, as always if you have any questions concerns comments feel free to drop them in the comment box below don't forget to like the video if you found it informative or if you just like it um, and please feel free to subscribe to the channel that way you are kept up to date uh, with all the videos that we're putting out it also helps us uh, tremendously if you like the videos and if you subscribe uh, I can't even explain how much it helps us. Uh, but for now, uh, that is it for me. Uh, again, this is Matt Atkins with Lathrum Media, and this was a convert and venter to Maya. Uh, but uh, for me, that is it, and I, everybody have a good one.